Alan Clapper. Well, hi, thank you everybody for coming. It's so great to see you. Uh, it's wonderful, especially in these COVID times, uh, that people have this call to be with each other and, and to do it safely. And uh, it looks like I don't see any viruses in the air here. I think everybody's uh, all okay. Good. Um, okay, uh, we've got a half an hour, a lot of stuff to cover. This is for the non-vegans in the group. This is for people who are still eating meat and dairy and thinking about or they got dragged to this event and not really sure what's up with this plant-based stuff. Uh, and, I wanna, and I'm going to say a bunch of things to those folks and hopefully one thing I say may go, ooh, I didn't realize that. And if so, then everybody can go home knowing it's been a successful day. Mm -hmm. um, so um, what's on our plate really matters. It does. Um, as a physician, I left uh, clinical practice a couple of years ago, and I'm spending my time going around to the medical schools in North America, Australia, New Zealand, Europe, uh, and giving the students the lecture I wish somebody had given me when I was a first-year med student. Uh, if you want to find out what we're doing, our initiative is called Moving Medicine Forward. You can find it on my website, drclapper.com. Trying to create a generation of nutritionally aware physicians so when you go in and talk to your doctor about nutrition, he doesn't throw you out of the office saying, when did you go to med school? So we want to uh, get nutrition um, firmly in uh, the course of medical practice. I'm not going to make this a medical lecture, just if any of you have any of these common diseases, if you're overweight, dealing with high blood pressure, clogged arteries, high cholesterol, uh, asthma, any inflammatory diseases uh, affecting your lung, your joints, your skin, know that these are largely due to what you are eating. It's the meat and the dairy and oils and sugars and, and processed uh, chemicals going through your bloodstream every few hours. And uh, if you get on a whole food plant-based diet, these diseases go away. And it's the most exciting advance in medicine. It's the most powerful tool available to any physician uh, to, to reverse these diseases. I practiced medicine for 40 years before somebody put disease reversal in the same sentence for me. Uh, but now it's what I insist upon uh, to uh, see if we can reverse these diseases with plant-based diets. They usually clear up. Um, and if there's any question, get on a whole food plant-based diet, lots of salads and soups and steamed veggies for 90 days and watch if your body doesn't feel better, if your itises don't go away, if your cholesterol doesn't get better you turn into a healthy human being who poops on a regular basis without, <laughs> uh, without laxatives. Uh, every one of us who practices a nutrition-based medicine, whole food plant-based uh, uh, nutritional program, I have patients like Emily, uh, she used to be 100 pounds overweight with diabetes, high blood pressure, whole food plant-based diet, 11 months. Uh, this, uh, whoops, well, that was a mistake. Um, this, um, the heavy Emily on the left turned into that svelte Emily on the right, normal blood pressure, normal blood sugars, off her medications. This is the highest form of healing that any physician could ever want for their patient. And I asked the students, what more could you want? Why are you going into medicine? You want to heal these patients or don't you? If you want, if you're serious about healing these patients, then get real about why they are sitting in front of you, overweight, diabetic, hypertensive, clogged up and inflamed from what they're freaking eating every four hours. And if you, if you get them on a plant-based diet like the gorilla and bonobo cousins we have up in the trees, uh, eating leaves and fruit, uh, they turn into normal, healthy people. And that should be square one with all your treatment programs. <clears throat> it's not too late. It's not too difficult. If you want some help, you know somebody who needs help, uh, go to the uh, website we uh, work with, plantbasedtelehealth.com. They have a jumpstart program there. Uh, we'll, we'll you meet with a telemedicine physician uh, at the beginning. Uh, you get 10 days worth of uh, vegan food. Check your lipids, etc. Things get better. Get you started. 
Um, but uh, Physicians Committee for Hospital Medicine, we've got a 21-day vegan jump start. I don't care how you do it, but take that first step. It's not too late. It's not too difficult. If you've not seen a film called Forks Over Knives, go to their website, ForksOverKnives.com, see the film, but then go back to the website. Uh, they've got a great transition plan. Uh, they'll walk you through uh, healthy foods. You can eat all you want. You still wind up nice, and lean, and healthy. But what I want to talk to you today is about my biggest patient, my most important patient. And we're here because of the kids. We're here at a school. And we owe these kids. We owe them an education. Uh, we owe them a sane society. We owe them a, a planet with life support systems that aren't going to collapse in their lifetime. But if, my, if the planet Earth was my patient, I would put it in the intensive care unit. It's got a fever uh, that's getting worse. Uh, the circulation system, the rivers are all clogged up like you know, someone with atherosclerosis. The digestive system of the soils have been poisoned and they're not uh, recycling the nutrients. And uh, it's a respiratory failure. Carbon dioxide levels are going up. Uh, this patient should be intubated and ventilated uh, until the, uh, um, uh, till the lungs repair themselves. We've got real trouble here. <laughs> and the global warming is getting worse. Uh, this is the ice cover, uh, 1979 versus 2007. <laughs> and these poor bears are on this iceberg because of a voracious appetite for meat. How can that be? What's the connection? I won't come to any surprise to the majority of you, but those who have never even thought about this, you need to know that large-scale industrial animal agriculture, where we raise and slaughter 70 billion living creatures every year on this planet, is the main driving force for every single environmental nightmare we face. Deforestation, they're cutting down the forest to make grazing land and cropland for beef. The soil is eroding off, uh, off corn and soybean fields destined for the gullet of animals. Most water in this country is used to irrigate alfalfa, corn, and soybeans, not to run cities. Most water is polluted with manure, pesticides, and herbicides running off of corn and soybean fields destined for the gullets of animals. Uh, most species are driven to extinction because we're taking their land and their forests uh, to grow grazing land for beef. And the majority of greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide coming off of um, um, uh, ammonia-based fertilizers, um, these are largely due to the large-scale production of animal flesh. Uh, 74 billion animals, cows, pigs, sheep, chicken, all of them are breathing out carbon dioxide. Most of them are belching out methane. Most of them are eating grains that have been raised with ammonia fertilizers, put nitrous oxide into the air. Uh, I'll, I'll give you some follow-up if you're interested in this. But people say, well, what about all the trucks on the road? They're putting out carbon dioxide. Um, that argument is specious and disappears when you consider one question. What's in the trucks? The entire agriculture industry is in those trucks. The farming industry is in those trucks. The restaurant industry is in those trucks. The fast food industry is in those trucks. They're full of tractors and fuel and fertilizers. Uh, their meat eating has its tentacles into every one of our environmental problems. There is no compartmentalizing transportation versus livestock production. It's all the same, and we're selling our souls and our future uh, for cheap cheeseburgers. There's soon going to be 9 billion of us on this planet. Well, let them eat fish. <clears throat> we kill <clears throat> over a trillion, one to three trillion sea animals each year. We are clear-cutting the oceans. We are strip-mining the oceans. And I urge you to get on Netflix and see a film that was just released called Sea Spiracy. Uh, it's from the producers of Cowspiracy. They, are, they focus their lens on commercial fishing and what the reality is of what that industry is doing to our oceans and how we're going to be left with dead oceans that lead to a dead planet. And you see these golfers uh, lining up their putts while the forests behind them are burning. And you have to ask, what are they doing? What are they thinking or not thinking? But before we wag our putters at these fellas, we got to think, what are, what are we doing? Uh, how are we... Yeah, how about them giants? You know, we're, we're focused on 
um, trivial matters in, in our daily lives when the life support systems are crumbling. I could go on and on. We have a short time here, to, and I'm thoroughly depressed uh, about how every single environmental uh, life support system is falling apart. The Amazon rainforest is now giving off more carbon dioxide than it's absorbing. The Gulf Stream is slowing down. The Gulf Stream currents because of all the fresh water melting off Greenland. Um, we're really messing up the life support system. So where lies hope? How can this heal itself? Yes, it can. The Earth's systems are so powerful, if we stop hurting them, they are self-correcting mechanisms. <clears throat> so where lies hope? Francis Willapay told us, hope does not come from calculating whether good news is winning out or bad. It's simply a choice to take action. Man, we got to do things. It's no longer enough to cluck tongues and, uh, and read articles here. So what's the answer? Since feeding humans directly with whole plant foods is so much more efficient than growing and feeding grains to animals and then slaughtering and eating the animals, a transition to a predominantly plant-based food source could feed a nourishing diet to all the 9 billion people who are going to be on this planet on about a quarter of the arable land. That's the most important fact uh, that you're going to hear today. Um, we'll just reduce it to a simple figure here. A standard American eating meat and dairy products needs two football fields of land and energy and animals to feed them for a year. Those same two football fields, if planted with corn and potatoes and beans and, and, uh, and whole grains, could feed 14 people versus one person. The economics are, are just stunning. What would happen if the world went vegan overnight? We'd have no need for the animals, and we, we created dairy cows. Don't mourn their loss. Uh, we, we bred them into existence. There's no fossilized dairy cows uh, in the fossil record. These are all artifactual animals we created. That We wouldn't need the land or the food. that would free up a land area the size of Africa. And only 20% of that would need to be cultivated to grow food for human beings. The rest of the land would, could come back as forest, and as the trees grow, they take carbon dioxide out of the air and start reversing global warming. I won't go into all the numbers, but uh, it works. Uh, the, the, the acreage, uh, the, the amount of carbon dioxide in forests and so healthy soils that are taken up far exceeds the amount of carbon dioxide we put into the air. If this happens, as we adopt a whole food plant-based diet, everything starts to heal. The forests come back. The soils will stabilize and stop eroding. The rivers are going to run clean again without all the manure and soil running into it. The oceans will begin to heal. The global warming will reduce. The world hunger should disappear. And we can stop fighting each other over scarce resources. Now, the oil and the gas, and you're going to destroy the economy if you make this kind of shift. And, and the powers that be uh, put on all sorts of excuses. On the contrary, it will save the society. We will save trillions in health care dollars. People are going to be healthier. We're going to need a lot less bypasses and stents, etc. We're going to lose a lot less people to illness for as far as productivity and taxes go. And we, as it reverses global warming, it's going to save us from sea level rise and all the disaster, wildfires, etc. And we can use that money to fix the roads, put internet in everybody's house, forgive student debt. We can start getting healthy again. It's the key to healing our society, not just our arteries. And it doesn't cost anything to choose the bean chili instead of the beef chili. You know, that's the huge sacrifice we're asking people to make. Uh, but it makes all the difference in the world, literally. <laughs> so what about the farmers and ranchers? You're going you're gonna to throw them off the land. No, we're not. On the contrary. Help these people. They're growing our food. They're not the enemy. Just help them do something else with the land. You don't have to run cattle on it. You don't have to run a dairy operation. You can do something else and help them. They're not the enemy. Build a couple less aircraft carriers, take those hundreds of billions of dollars, 
and establish the Farmers and Ranchers Transition Administration and help them, send them to community college, learn them how to grow, learn how to grow hemp and vegetables and fruit trees, and ensure their crops, pay for their seeds, pay for their new equipment, pay the mortgage on their house, send their kids to college, make it easy for these folks to make this transition. <laughs> and and it turns out there I've been saying that for years, there now is an organization devoted to doing that. It's called the Agricultural Fairness Alliance. If this is if this speaks to you, go to the go to the Agricultural Fairness Alliance dot org and they are putting bills into Congress. They've got the ears of some sympathetic congressmen who are starting to introduce bills to accomplish this very thing. And this is what needs to happen. So help this happen. Give them some money. Give them some support. And it's all done by Zoom. You can show up at their hearings, etc. So action is required. Gus Bethlin, the best environmentalist, so he thought the problem is going to be in battery stores and all that. No, he says the real, the greatest enemies are selfishness, greed, and apathy. That's why we're why things are just getting worse. So, <clears throat> what do we got to do? We got to educate ourselves, transform ourselves, and organize ourselves. Um, educate yourself. This is such a key issue that nobody's talking about, but it's going to lead to all our destruction. So I urge you to go to climatehealers.org uh, and see the videos that Dr. Silas Rao has posted there. He will educate you about these important issues. Go to the website of Dr. Richard Oppelander called Comfortably Unaware, which is right where the meat and dairy industry wants you. You see the videos on his website, read his book, Comfortably Unaware. Educate yourself, wake yourself up. There's nothing more important to educate yourself about. If you haven't seen a film called Game Changers, see this film. You have the confidence to know that you can talk to people. Corin is, is a living example that you can create a magnificent muscle ripped body on whole plant foods. Ask any gorilla, ask any giraffe, buffalo, elephant. You, know, you can do it on plants. And um, check out some of these plant-based athletes again, just to build up your confidence. Yes, this is a reasonable thing to do. Uh, um, go to my website, drclapper.com, download my resources sheet on how to make this transition. You'll find lots of videos there, lots of, uh, uh, lots of aids as well. And here we are at, <clears throat> at Solid Rock. And the kids here are exposed to important environmental ideas. And they need to grow up and graduate as aware environmental citizens. Because every purchase you make at the supermarket, every meal you buy in a restaurant is a powerful statement to the producers, to the people around you, uh, to the entire society. It really matters. It's not, well, they're just kids. They, they spend money and, they, and very soon they're going to vote. Um, it is important. There's nothing more important than to wake the kids up. To, it'll scare them. But listen, no food in the stores is going to scare them as well. It's time to get real. We owe the kids the truth. Um, you're not going to find it from the Environmental Protection Agency. This is off their website. Uh, what you can do at school, and they're all into recycling. That's great. Not a word do they mention about the connection between food and the environment. So it's up to you to talk truth to power and truth to, your, to the kids as well. And the message is the time to stop eating animals has come. We've used it up. No matter what role the mighty hunter played, it doesn't matter. Um, that chapter has closed. We have turned the page. We are being told as individuals you want to be healthy, eat a plant-based diet. And Homo sapiens as a species, you want to survive, adopt a plant-based diet. The lights are flashing. This is clearly the message, no matter how you want to slice it. We've used animal eating up. We've used fishing up. Okay. Gandhi said, be the change you want to, uh, you want to see. Uh, start by what you're having for lunch or dinner. Dr. Rao tells us we now have to change from a predator species, which we've been all along on this planet, to Homo ahimsa, like to caretaker species, you know, the, in the Bible, uh, it, it, you know, it says, you know, you know, we should have dominion over the animals. 
dominion comes from the same root as domestic. Domicile means your house. You know, these are guests in your house. And, and man is, the, is supposed to be the gardener, the caretaker of the garden and all the creatures in it, not the predator, not the slaughterer. <clears throat> As Dr. Rao says, compassion for all life is infinitely sustainable. And if you care at all about the injustice of this, as we're sitting here now, there are thousands and thousands of nameless, anonymous sheds on the hillsides throughout Florida and the Midwest and California where, where hundreds of thousands, where millions and millions of pigs and chickens and cows are, are in these sheds living this life of just misery and then facing this dreadful death so we can have that chicken breast sandwich. Uh, what right do we have to inflict suffering and death on, on such an industrial scale to these Millions and millions of creatures who love their life as much as we do. At this point, you got to hold up the mirror, Homo sapiens. How, you know, how can we justify this any longer? How, how can we use death as a as a tool to feed ourselves? If you eat death, guess where it leads you. Um, so, as Dr. Rao is telling us, we got to make this. We got to transform ourselves, um, and we can become a non-violent species that cares and nourishes things and everything will get better. So start with yourself. Make a move. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you are vegetarian but still eating dairy, it's time to really consider that. Reconsider it. Get real about the truth of dairy. Not only is the stuff unhealthy, makes your nose runs, makes your asthma worse, makes skin break out, it, 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 the proteins are not gentle uh, on the homo sapien body. It's all baby calf growth food. It's, it's meant to blow little baby calves up to great big cows in a matter of months, and it does that for human beings. <clears throat> the truth is you have no more need for the milk of a cow than you do the milk of a giraffe. Really, would you, would you pour rat milk on your cereal? Would you pour dog milk on your cereal? Um, well, there's nothing magic about cow milk, and there's a whole lot that isn't. <clears throat> They make things bigger. It's growth fluid, and, and you're trying to lose weight. These do that. You're, you're, you're chasing your tail if you're trying to lose weight and still eating cheese. I can spot the dairy eaters when they walk in my office. I see the bloat in their face, their thick necks, their bovine appearance. Here, these ladies eat dairy products. They somebody finally convinced them that they're not baby calves. They stopped eating dairy products, and eight weeks later, these ladies turned into these ladies. Same, same women, okay? On the left, eating baby calf growth fluid. On the right, not eating baby calf growth fluid. Right? It makes that much of a difference. So I tell people, well, well, what do I do about my cheese? I say, look in the mirror. Mm -hmm. If you look in the mirror, and looking back at you, you see this. <laughs> then enjoy your cheese and your yogurt, man. You earned it. Mm -hmm. But if you don't see that, realize that you're taking the milk from a, from another creature. And there's no reason for it. Nowadays, there's so much else to pour in your cereal, to pour in your ice cream, to, to put on your sandwich. It's, it's really becoming archaic. And finally, if, if suffering means anything to you, people are shocked to learn that cows don't naturally give milk. No, they don't. They're like any other mammal, they've just had a baby, uh, and that baby is taken away from them. In order to keep that milk flowing in the dairy, the cows are made pregnant, that bull semen is rammed into their uterus like the guy on the right is doing. They get pregnant, they carry that calf for nine months like a human mother does, give birth to a 65 pound baby, not a pleasant uh, endeavor, and but that baby is immediately taken away. And every time you buy that corn, that, that container of Greek yogurt, every time you put the mozzarella on the cheese, you're paying, you say, yes, take another baby away from your mother, take another baby away from its mother. You've got to keep taking those babies away, and the mother cries for days. On my uncle's farm, I still can remember the call of a mother cow with her baby calf in the veal pen 10 yards away, bellowing, 
hour after hour, the most heart-rending, soul-tearing bellows because we can't get to her baby to nurse it. And, but, and there's no way around this. If you're eating real dairy, you are paying for this atrocity, mostly against women, against the females. These are female mothers. These are female. Uh, these are mothers that are crying after their babies for no reason at all. Um, so choose the uh, non-dairy outcome. Well, it's, it's hard to do. We've given up so many other things. You remember, the thing on the left is a typewriter. You, know, you, know? Um, you used to make phone calls by doing a rotary telephone, and this is a real, real tape recorder. Okay? How, this, and this was part of normal life. Um, and how could it ever disappear? <laughs> Gone. You know, there's so many things that are now just passing through us. Let let Gruyere cheese and pepperoni pizzas pass that same way. We used to have a vibrant whaling industry in this country, and the, the harpooners were the were the rock stars of Bedford, Massachusetts, in the 1850s. Now, oh my God, I can't believe we used to help the whales in the head. We used to buy and sell black people in this country, in this very state. My God, you, know, you think of that now? Oh my God, how could we ever done that? Well, here's, we're raising millions and millions of animals to cut their throat and strip the flesh off their bones and, and shove it in our mouths. There comes a point where you say, is it worth it for this guy to be able to, to do this, the cost to the animals, to the planet, to our future? And nowadays with the new burgers, you, you can even give them something to taste me to. So where lies hope? <clears throat> look to your left, look to your right, look in the mirror. Okay? First of all, be an example. If you don't know Happy Cow, download it on your phone. It'll take you to all the vegan off freedom friendly restaurants, health food stores, etc. Uh, give potlucks. Come to events like this. Be an example. People watch what you eat. Uh, let them see you eat a plant based meal. Find out where your water comes from, where your food comes from. What are they spraying on it? How much water are they using? Are they contaminating it? Write your congressperson. <clears throat> It matters. They, for every note that the congressman gets, they think there's a hundred people out there who feel the same way. So, how do you find out? Um, uh, oh, okay. This um, did come through. Uh, Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, PCRM.org. Um, they are. Uh, they have legislative hawks that watch to see what are important bills to come up on their website. They will tell you, or they'll send out an email. Um, Find out who your representative is. Go to whosmyrepresentative.com and type in your zip code. You'll find out who the representative is and tell them I'm in favor of this bill or against this bill. Um, there are people around the world. There are vegans in every country. I've just been on the Internet with them in, in Hungary and Poland and Lithuania and in England. Um, the, the, the entire world is waking up to this. We need some magic. Young people in the Internet. Make magic. Um, you're not alone. Look around you. Connect with an organization. If you don't know plant-based news, subscribe to it. They will keep you up to date on the latest, most heartwarming, positive, progressive uh, uh, accomplishments that people are uh, creating uh, for the plant-based uh, Meeting needs to become as uncool as fur wearing. You know, you know, someone walks in a big full length co fur coat. We would say, are you, are you still doing that? Uh, well, when someone orders a T-bone steak or uh, or the Chicago sausages, uh, yeah, are you still eating that at this point? Needs to be the uh, the response. So we've made great progress. Uh, in restaurants, it's easier to get a vegan meal. Supermarkets have yeah, vegan uh, foods. The media is more friendly, still antagonistic. There's more and more vegan celebrities. Universities are allowing now uh, vegetarian cafeteria lines. It's much wider acceptance, but the most important thing is how we vote. And we need to vote in people who are not invested in the old meat and dairy, uh, oil, 
uh, paradigm here. We need to get progressive vegan legislators. There used to have been such. Uh, Senator Cory Booker says he's a vegan. Um, there's a, uh, oh, uh, Jamie Raskin um, says he's vegan. Uh, the congressman. Um, we need a whole Congress full of vegans. And so vote them in. Burgers for nine billion, really, and that's what the paleo folks are saying. Oh, everybody ought to eat paleo. Are you seriously saying a, a flesh-based meal three times a day for nine billion people? What are you talking about, the keto folks? Oh, yeah, yeah. Pack your intestine full of meat three times a day. What are you talking about? Not only is it dangerous for your body, but it'll destroy this planet. These kids deserve better. Mm, they deserve a functional flowing planet with clean water and stable atmospheres. So, the question is, what's on your plate? And so to the pre-vegans, I love that term, Shannon, uh, got me, they got me, uh, yeah. for the, for the pre-vegans here, if anything I said may just think, wow, I didn't realize that. Wonderful, you've moved a very important inch, a tiny little door has opened uh, in your awareness and hopefully in your heart say, what right do I have to inflict this? Because every time someone's in the restaurant and they turn to the wait person and say, oh, I'll have the beef, I'll have the chicken, I'll have the veal. Every time you say those words, your kid's world gets a little hotter and a little drier and a little deader and, and more rainforest is burned. Uh, it, we can't, no one's looking. The animals are looking. The kids are looking. The earth is looking. Every choice matters at this point. So the issue is what is on your plate? And for the example you set to other people, you've been a 20-year vegan, but the, but the person next to you is new to the side, why would you order that? And, gee, you're looking good. Hmm, gee, I saw that you had a big salad for lunch. It, it makes a difference. So don't think uh, that you don't make a difference. Uh, um, as Gandhi said, it, it, you may think that what you're doing is not very important, but it's very important that you do it well. And, uh, and that comes to, uh, to living an ecologically harmonious life. So um, that basically is the message. Support this wonderful organization. It's very brave what they're doing. Uh, and not only support them uh, in your heart, uh, but get involved and, and tune into their environmental program. What are they teaching the kids here? And where do plant-based diets fit in in their curriculum? And, uh, and work with them to get a, an appropriate plant-based message as part of the, uh, the teachings that uh, this wonderful institution imparts. Okay, so that's basically what I wanted, uh, I wanted to get across. As I mentioned not a few long-term vegans, none of this is a surprise, it's old stuff. But it's getting more and more urgent, and we're running out of time to turn this around. You know, it's like turning an ocean liner, and, and we, we got to get around and get on with it. So um, I may have a couple. I've got uh, what, and went past my four or five hours. Here. So uh, so no time for questions, but time for thanks. Thank you. Oh my goodness, a giant, another giant round of applause for Dr. Clapper, please. Dr. Clapper is one of my heroes because not only is he an incredible doctor and knows so much about the health, but he's an incredible animal rights activist and he's just amazing. All right, so I know everybody's really hot, but the good news is our next speaker's inside. Actually, our next two speakers are inside. Sap the Vegan here is about to tell you all an amazing transformation story. Thank you, thank you. Good.
<laughs> yeah, I'm still doing this. I got a pin, too. Yeah. Oh, I'm psyched about that. So I was like, What's your name? Jenna. Yeah, I love it. You got it. I love it. Four eight. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Four eight. Four eight. Yeah. I don't know about yeah. the yeah. 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 Water for Dr. Clapper. Oh. Hey. 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 Check out the letters. Check out the letters. Yeah. Yeah. It is a big about any Yeah, <laughs> <laughs>